So recently I saw a post from a Wizard of the Coast employee on MTG Flex, I think the Discord channel, and they had pulled the Retro Black Lotus. And their post was like, oh, I didn't think there's a good product, but, and then on the um, little corner, they also posted, uh, it was also a Mox Jet, I believe, not retro, just a regular. It could have been one pack, right? It could have been one pack had, uh, again, that's what it seemed like when it was posted because they had, you know, they had the Mox Jet a little peeking out from the, and you could tell it was a Mox because they put the Mox in the word. So the way that it was uh, taken, it was, it was meant to look very sloppy, but it was probably coordinated so you could also see that he hit a Mox and maybe the same pack. This is a Wizard Coast employee that I believe needs to be fired. Now, people in the comment sections, they were did not like what I said, but what I'm going to say is going to be very true. Wizard of the Coast is a disgusting company. Look at what's happening in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I'm making videos on my other channel about Dungeons and Dragons. I haven't made any on this channel because honestly, I don't really know Dungeons and Dragons that much. So I'm still trying to learn it. And I've been very honest about, I don't, I know about open gaming licenses. I know about licenses. Every patent attorney is an expert in license law as well, because once we get our patents for our clients, we have to license, you know, when the client wants to try to make some money from it, then they hire us to license or look for licensing opportunities, uh, especially in software and, and well, I mean, it's any, any patent. I mean, unless you're actually, I would say 90% of the time patents are really to get licensed to a bigger company. So you get paid, you get your royalties, you get your license fees, and then you renew and then renew and then renew. I mean, it's a lot easier that way than to actually have to start a company, especially if it's a physical product and then you have to create a manufacturing and do all that. A lot of people initially want to go that route, but then very quickly they find out that it's even more expensive than they expected. So the Dungeon Dragons, yeah, they are battling the Wizard of the Coast right now, and they're winning. They have won battle one. Uh, the open gaming license has been delayed. Now it will be changed. They will have a different version of it to combat NFTs. <laughs> I actually just read the thing. Uh, they, they named three things. We need to A, combat NFTs, B, combat negativity and hatefulness, and C, we need to combat big corporations taking advantage of us. That was the list of free items, not in that order. I think it was, uh, item one was, I know the NFT one took me by surprise that they had to combat. The reason the open gaming license have to change is now they have to incorporate NFTs and web free and crypto. I was like, oh, okay, that's a very interesting. I don't know who came out with that argument. All right, back to the uh, issue at hand. Uh, I think Wizard Coast is one of the most corrupt companies ever they unfortunately produced two very popular games magic the gathering and dungeons and dragons in terms of incompetence mero has lied to us many times just like in dungeons and dragons they've lied to their player base many times even in the letter like the apology letter they lied uh the guy was like oh i counted five times they lied and i was like yeah i, I don't know enough about dungeons and dragons to like count but it does seem kind of shady and they're like oh we rolled a one you know how like in magic apologies, they throw like stupid stuff out to us. Like well, Dungeon Dragon apology, they like, we wrote a one. And they're like, I know a lot of you guys wanted you guys to win and us to lose, but that's not, that's only half true. We both won. I was like, no, you didn't win. You got a lot of bad PR, the community backlash and people, and you lost some money because people canceled it. So my, my point is these Wizard of Coast employees should not be bragging about their retro Black Lotuses they've got for free. Okay, this is the last thing we need. Um, for This is the last thing any company would need when their product is $1,000 for a proxy. I mean, the last thing I would want to see is somebody who got, who was a Wizard Coast. This is the same thing with um, special invites. When they invited that Dungeons and Dragon player with an ELO of like 1300, which means he's a very bad player. Essentially, it's a guy who just, just sucks at magic and the special invites go to employee. It's no surprise that a lot of people who got those special invites later all became employees today. The uh, the Emma Handys, who are, uh, I think her uh, name has changed again. Her name has changed again. Um, he, them, she, them, non-binary name changed again. 
Um, we have uh, Ellie, right, who you know needed a donation to pick up her paycheck because it was a minimal price. But you know, hey, I got to, I'm gonna go fund me and hey, double dip, right? Why not? Um, you have a lot of people who were special invited who are now employees or war employees of Wizards of the Coast for the magic uh, magic tournaments. That is corruption. That's nepotism. That is every single word that you can think. That's basically, hey, these are my friends. I, I wanna hang out with some cosplayers. Let me invite them to my special party where they get thousands of dollars even though they suck at magic and some of them have never played before. And the, the problem I have, it, it's the same thing that Dungeons and Dragons is having right now. If you are an employee of Wizards of the Coast you pull a retro black lotus that you didn't pay for, that you got for free, please do not post it on MTG Flex. That is not a flex. That is the opposite of what you think it is. It is bad PR for the company. It's bad PR for the brand. Like I know a lot of magic players in comment sections. I, I just think butt cracks because I think that's the intelligence level I'm dealing with. But Dungeons and Dragons, the, the comments, uh, the, the feedback has been very positive about my opinions. And they're fighting. Magic is a bunch of like, I mean, I, I look at Dungeons and Dragons community. I don't know very much about them. I just know they don't buy very much from my store and we don't really carry very much products for them. But yeah, it, it makes, I was reading a comment and they were like, yeah, this is a bunch of engineers. These are people who like statistics and data and lawyers and they like to read legal and do legal jargon. And I was like, wait a second, that kind of makes sense. That's why these people in Dungeons and Dragons are able to fight back against corruption at Wizard of the Coast. That's why when somebody posts their retro Black Lotus as a Wizard of the Coast employee, everyone's just, <laughs> way to get that one for free, buddy. Oh my God, he got Mox 2. Wow, same pack, same pack. And it's like, wait a second, you idiots. This guy clearly is getting free magic cards. Like how many booster boxes did he get for free? Or even worse. Or is there a select booster box that he took that knew he had to... Because isn't the Retro Black Lotus the, the potential? If only so many boxes were made. Are you telling me that the only one that in current existence that I know of, that anyone knows of, is in a Wizard of Coast employee's hands? And this is something we want to make public. And this is something everyone in the Magic community just clap, 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 clap. No, you dumbasses. Like, this is what I'm dealing with. So I guess Dungeons and Dragons, there's a lot of lawyers and agents. I, so I'm being told. Yeah, a lawyer would look at this and say, oh, that is very shady and probably is not, you know, probability, a statistician or engineer. Somebody with a math degree would look at this and say, ah, oh, this is not right. So the only time anyone's opened a retro Black Lotus, they got it for free and they were a blanking employee. Even Post Malone didn't get his retro Black Lotus. But the Wizard of Coast employee, Jesse, sure did get his retro Black Lotus. His or her. Jesse could be also a female name. I don't want to be discriminate, you know. I don't want to be banned for life again. So, like, maybe I should be going to Dungeons and Dragons. They seem to be, like, a smarter audience. And they definitely don't have a butt crack issue, right? Like, not that I know of. So, anyway. If only they spent more money. So, yeah, there is an issue. Now I'm thinking about why well, I haven't done Dungeons and Dragons. Oh man, it's like magic without without the potential to compete against Amazon. <laughs> Let's be honest, it is magic. Uh, but I'm being told there's a lot of lawyers and engineers at, at Dungeon who play Dungeons and Dragons, which may be true. There's not many lawyers and engineers who play magic. I can tell you that much. That's why when a guy named Wizard of the Coast employee Jesse, he wants everyone to know. Number one, he wants everyone to know he works at Wizard of the Coast, which is dumb on itself. Number two, he wants everyone to know he opened a retro Black Lotus with a uh, Mox on the, on the, on the playmat. He really did appear like th that he was saying that he opened a Mox regular and a retro Black Lotus in the same pack, the way that the picture was presented. And yet everyone, all the dumbasses in the comments, they're like, oh man, he got lucky. What a great dude. 
Nah, man, nah, no one else has one. Like, come on, my dude. Have you even seen? Oh, I mean, come on, my guys. Use your heads. This is like the special invite. Oh, they must be super random. When the same mother effers get invited every time and they're now all Wizard Coast employees. No, it's not super random, you dumbasses. Like, I, I cannot, like sometimes I, I think I'm in the twilight zone and I'm just dealing with a bunch of lemmings and the lemmings agree with Wizard Coast. No, Wizard Coast is an evil company that does evil things to its cost. They literally, in the Dungeons & Dragons I covered, they're literally hating. They never had any one former or current employee. I don't know. It's, a, it's you know, a leak. They say that they hate us. They, they, well, they were saying that they hate Dungeons & Dragons players. They specifically hate and never have anything positive to say about their community. And I know this is true because look at who they hired. Look at who they gave special invites to. Look at who they hired. Look at who's getting free packs. And then use your brain. Use your brain for a little bit, guys, and think, hmm. Hmm. It's super obvious that a Wizard of Coast employee who got a free pack should not be posting a black retro Black Lotus. The probability of that Wizard of Coast employee having that card, which is equivalent to their salary, supposedly, and then and then potentially pulling a Mox jet on top of it, is so ludicrous. The probability is so low that it, it, it cannot be, there has to be something shady going on. It's the same with invitations, right? The uh, top player at the time, Austin, didn't get a single invitation. In fact, you know who didn't, the guy who, one of the guys who won the Mythic tournament didn't even get back in, an invitation, a special invite back to defend the Mythic tournament that he won. I mean, come on, that's crazy. You got to at least give him a defense, right? Invite him, out of all the people you invite back, invite the guy who won. But they kept inviting cosplayers. They kept inviting their own employees to these events, these mythic champs. Remember, there's only 68 of them. And even if you finish 68th, you still get a paycheck for 2000 bucks, which then you can go fund me to get even more money. What I'm trying to express here is there's a lot of corruption on the Wizard of Coast company, and this is just more of it. And if you don't see this for what it is, you are a butt crack. 